All right, welcome back. So picking up where we left off at number 12, uh, this is saying whether indicate whether each problem is a model for exponential growth or decay. Whoa, excuse me. Um, let's color code this a little bit. So growth is a nice, happy thing. So let's call growth green. And decay is something that goes down. Um, let's call that, I don't know. I don't have a good color for that. Let's call that blue. So everything that's growth, uh, when we look for growth, we're going to be looking at the number in here and trying to decide whether that number will make the function increase as x gets larger or decrease as x gets smaller or as, as x gets larger. Um, so here's something that will generate growth because this is uh, greater than 1. 1 1.2 is greater than 1. So that's going to generate growth. Uh, let's see, what else would generate growth? Here, this would generate growth. Uh, because 2.5 is more than 1. These three on the bottom here, we have some sort of like plus and minus expressions. Let's see, this would be greater than 1, so that will generate growth. All of these other things, though, are going to generate decay. This is less than 1. This is less than 1. And this value here is also less than 1. So those will be decay. So again, here, uh, green growth, uh, blue decay. I also wrote uh, for you to ask you to choose two of these models and write like a story problem which uses that equation. So just as an example, let's do uh, a 2000 times 0.9 to the x. Now uh, the problem, the interpreting challenge here is what, what the heck do you do with this 0.9? Um, we already said that it's decay, so it's something that's decreasing. Um, it's not decreasing at a rate of 9% or even a rate of 90%. This point 0.9 means that there's 90% left over each time that it decreases. So a story problem might be like this. There are 2,000 um kittens each day 10% of them get adopted so that's the story 2000 is the original value of kittens if there's 90% left over that means 10% of them got adopted every day and we need to think of a question. So let's make a question that says, uh, how long will it take for uh, there to be only 10 kittens left? And that would be a nice sort of kitty cat themed problem that you could do. Um, in this case, for a problem we were asking how long, we would be asking you to solve for x by setting this equation 2000 times 0.9 to the x equal to 10. Because this would be the number of kittens we're asking how long, so that's talking about the x value. Your story problem might uh, relate to one of these. It might be completely different. I think the, the big idea here is, is trying to get you to interpret uh, the 0.9 as like the percent that's increasing or decreasing every time and getting you to interpret the 2000 as the starting uh, value or amount. So each of these might have a different starting value, amount, etc. Um, but the story problems are up to you. Let's go on to these word problems. Um, so most of these word problems, uh, just as a preface, are going to use the form y equals a b to the x. And notice that there's one, two, three, four things that you don't know in here. They have to, if they want you to be able to solve this problem, they have to give you three of these and ask you to find one of these. 
That's all they can really do. If we don't give you three of these somehow in the story, then you don't have enough information. So thinking about that, let's look at this problem. You're off a job at a uh, starting salary of 40000 per year. The company promises you a raise of 6% per year for the first 10 years. What is your salary after four years? First of all, this thing about the first 10 years is completely unnecessary in the problem because they're asking about your salary after four years. So um, this sounds like it's asking you for the Y value. So I think we just need to do, whoa, 40,000 times, now 6% is gonna translate to a growth factor of 1.06. And then after four years, that's gonna say, let's put that to the fourth. Um, just because I value your time, I'm not going to evaluate this on the calculator. I trust that you can. Um, if you had an expression like this, uh, then you're most of the way there. All right, number four. A bacterial culture grows at a rate of 80% every hour. So 80% is 0 0.8. If the culture initially has 10,000 cells, what will be the culture size in four hours? So let's try this out. Uh, we're going to do 10,000, because it was a starting value, times, now this one's tricky. This thing is growing, so we have to do 1 plus 0.8, so 1.8. And then after 4 hours, that's going to be 1.8 to the 4. For part 2, it says find a function. Uh, well, we could write B of T for bacteria, B for bacteria is equal to 1,000, 10,000, sorry, times 1.8 to the t. And that would be the sort of the functional answer. Number 15, plutonium is used in nuclear reactors as fuel, decays at a rate of 13% every year. So it's decaying. So we're going to do 1 minus 13% as a decimal, which is 0.13. And that's going to give us 0 0.87 left over. And that's the thing that's going in the equation. Um, so if a power plant has 8,500 grams of plutonium, all right, well, let's put in something what we know. So let's say 8,500, 8,500 times 0 0.87 to the T, we'll use T because they're talking about years, is equal to uh, plutonium. Uh, now this one's a little weird because we said you have, they have to give you four things. Um, so here's the question. How many years will it take for half of it to decay? Ooh, well if half of it decays, then half of it is going to be left. So 8,500 divided by 2 is uh, 4,250. True? So let's write this equation. 8,500 times 0.87 to the t equals 4,250. Now, when we solve this, something really cool happens. It becomes 0 0.87 to the t is equal to 4,250 divided by 8,500. Well, we know where that is. That's one half because 4,250 came from the 8,500 originally. So we know it's got to reduce down to one half. All right, now to solve here for t, uh, since you have a t and a power, this is where you're going to use your secret tool of logarithms. So this is going to be log base of 0 0.87 of 1 half equals t. Again, I you can put this into your calculator just as well as I can. Make sure that you know how to get logs in a calculator. If it's asking you for this, you want the, to give the exact number of years. Um, but I'm just giving you the exact answer here to spare you some time. All right, number 16. Linda invested 2500 in a bank account that gave her annual compounding interest. Um, let's ignore the word compounding there. Just say annual interest. After five years, she had this amount. So, uh, and we want to write a function for the amount of money she will have had in her account. So the one thing they didn't tell us is the rate of interest. So th we're going to set up our equation kind of with just a missing blank here. So it's going to be 2,500 times something 
to the fifth, because it's five years, equals 2713.17. Um, now we're trying to find this. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't really like using an X in here. I think, uh, it makes things a little more messy than it needs to be. Let's call it R because we're trying to find the rate. It doesn't matter. You can pick your favorite variable. X is fine if you like X. Um, let's divide by 2500. And we get 1.085268. So we have R to the fifth is one point, what is it, zero eight five two six eight. Now, to get rid of a fifth power, you might think, oh, let's take a logarithm. But remember that logarithms are only the tool you use in situations like this, where you have a variable in your exponent. Here, the variable is down here in the base. So we're going to take the fifth root of both sides. And that's how we're going to get that uh, fifth power to go away. You could also do it to the one fifth power, but uh, I think it's easier just to go math, do uh, number five here, and we got to replace that with a five, and scroll up and go get our number here. And we get 1.0165, we'll say. So R is 1.0165. Uh, now remember, this isn't the final answer. The question was, write a function. So let's take everything we know and write a function. Um, f of t equals 2500 times, now we're going to use our r value from before, 1.0165 to the t. And so we use that, that information about five years to find the r value. Once we've got it, we're done with it, and we can come back and write the function to solve the answer. All right, I'm just going to keep going with these word problems. Um, and if you feel like you've got these word problems at any point, you can jump ahead to the other parts of the video. Um, but let's, uh, I feel like you, we want, some of you probably want to see them solved. So here we go. Uh, if you invested a penny in 1776 at 10% annual interest, how much in, would you have on January 1st, 2015? Now, this is kind of a fun question. So a penny is, um, let's say point zero one dollars makes sense to me to do this in dollars times 10 percent annual interest so that's going to be 1.10 and we got to go to the x and then uh i'm going to figure out how many years it is so 2015 minus 1776 is 239 so for 239 years, I'm going to do 0.01 times 1.1 to the 239th. Let's see what we get. Oh my gosh, that's a big number. That is 7,831,600. No, 000... that's an even bigger number. That's a really big number. 7,8136,104. and one cent. So $78 million. Uh, that's, you get that from plugging in, again, 239 for X, because that's the number of years that have passed. Number 18 is a nice problem. It's asking you a problem sort of reverse. So if you want to get 20,000, you're going to write 20,000, 20,000 equals, um, let's say uh, A for initial amount times 1.085. I'm doing this because 8.5% is 0 0.085 as a decimal uh, in five years. So that's going to be to the fifth. Um, this one's a little weird to solve. What you have to do is realize that this is just a number. So let's see what it is. One point five oh three something, and then we can divide. We can take twenty thousand and divide by that number. 
And it looks like we'd have to invest $13,300. So uh, A is $13,300 and 90 cents. So again, these problems are all kind of the same flavor. You have to know what the equation looks like and where the pieces go. But of the four pieces, we could give you any three and ask you to solve for the fourth. Number 19. A small island had a population of 4,200, inhabitants in 64, in 1994. So right away I look at that and I say, all right, that's plus 30 years. Another census was taken and the population had decreased to 23,550. If the population decays at the same percentage, how many inhabitants will the island have in 2002? All right, so I need to write an equation. So my initial population is 42,100. Then it's going to be times, let's again call this just R. And I'm going to put up here, I usually put up here the number of years that have passed. So 30 years have passed. And that's going to equal, well, the population in 1994, 23,500. 50. All right, well, based on this, um, it kind of feels like one of those curve fitting problems from before. We're really just trying to find what the value here is for r. So uh, I'll take this number and divide by 42,100. Do that in the calculator. And so I get r to the 30th is approximately 0.559. Hmm. Now to undo a 30th power, we're going to do that, uh, we've used it before, we're going to do the 30th root of both sides. And this is just in your calculator, it's in the math menu, number 5, you scroll over and put 30 here, and as you scroll over, the best thing to do is just keep that whole number in there, see how the calculator puts the whole number in? Oh, something's slightly wrong here. Let's see. I need to delete the answer part all the way. All right. So that's slightly different. Be sure that you, you get rid of that whole thing there. Um, your right answer is 0 0.9808. Uh, and we'll say that's probably about fine. So... Um, R is approximately 0 0.9808. Now, if we want to know how many inhabitants there will be in 2002, we got to do another step. We have to, we should write the equation. So it's going to be 42,100 times 0 0.9808 to the something. And I need to know how many years it's been from 1964 to 2002. Well, it was 30 years here. Uh, it's 1994, and this is eight more years, so this is going to be 38 total years. And let's just punch that in the calculator. So 42,100 times, since I've got it up here, I'm going to use the whole thing. Whole decimal there to the 38th. And I get something like 20,170.34 inhabitants. or maybe approximately 20,170 uh, people. Since it's not usually common to have 0.34 of an inhabitant on your island. All right, we've been mixing it up, uh, mixing it up with all these different word problems, but now we're gonna go back to the basics. Piece of machinery valued 175,000, depreciates at a rate of 10% every year. Uh, here, you gotta know what the word depreciates means depreciate means it loses value so if it loses 10 percent each year we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.1 that's the 10 percent of the decimal so you get 0 0.9 and then after six years that's going to be six times the that and whatever this is in your calculator that will give you the value moving up to 21. the population of a particular city 
increases by 4.6% each year. If in 2003 the population was 2,000, 200,000, what was the population in 2012? So here they're giving you some years. You need to set this through. So 2003 is going to be your year 0. 2012 is going to be year, how many years later is that? Well, 2000, 2012 minus 2003, that's going to be year number 9. So that's going to be tell us what to plug in here. So it's going to be something like 200,000 times, now here's this percent as a decimal. Be careful with this. 4.6 as a decimal is 0 0.046. So this is going to be 1.046. And then uh, we said 2012 is 9 years later, so it's going to be this. To the ninth, just plug all that into your calculator and see what you get for a final answer population. And 22, I think, was our last word problem. Um, Rohit bought a new car for $17,500. The value is depreciating, so that means it's decreasing again at a rate of 16% per year. So uh, we're going to do 1 minus 0.16, and that's going to be 0.84, or 84% left over every time. Uh, this is another half question. When will the car be worth half its original value? So 17,500 divided by 2 is 8,750. So we're going to set up something like this. Uh, 17,500 times uh, 0.84 to the x. Remember they're asking when, that means you're going to be solving for the time value here is equal to 8750. Let's divide again and this, this thing that happened before with the half is going to happen again. Since these, uh, the 8750 came from doing this, when I divide by 17500, you don't need your calculator to know that this is going to be 0.84 to the x equals one half. And like before, we're going to solve this with a log. So this is going to be x is the log with a base of 0.84 of one half. And just because it's the last word problem, let's plug that in and see what we get. Alpha window 5 is our log base. Our base is 0.84. In here, we're going to type one half. Be sure we close the parentheses, and it's going to be 3.975. And the question is like, what are the units on this? Well, uh, we're saying when, and they're talking about years. This is 3.975 years after, we'll say, as a final answer here. That was the last word problem. Now we're onto these curve fitting problems. So 23 says find the equation for this function. Uh, this is asking it for the form of a times b to the x, and it goes to the point 0, 1 and 2, comma 100. So again, 0 is really nice here. Let's plug everything in. This is giving you an x and a y. So 1 equals a times b to the 0. That's 1 equals a times 1 which means 1 has to equal a. Very cool. Now let's use the second point as an x and a y. 100 equals 1, that was our a carrying over, times b, uh, and 1 times b, and then we're trying to figure out what goes up here. Uh, well, that's going to be the x value, so 1 times b to the second power. Uh, this is a nice little piece of algebra, not too bad to solve, so we have 100 equals b squared. We take the square root of both sides, and we get 10 equals b. So an equation for this function then, right, to answer the original question is something like y equals 1 times 10 to the x. A good function. The next one is about curve fitting with this uh, E formula, KE to the CX. And they still give us two points, X, 
comma y's, x comma y's, uh, and we're using this e formula. So just like before, let's use the first x and the first y. So this is going to be 9 equals k e to the c times 0. c times 0 is 1, so this is like k e to the 0. Sorry, then this is like k times 1 equals 9. So that's saying 9 equals k. All right, then let's use the second point. So 42 equals 9 times e to the c times 10. All right, so we're going to divide by 9. So 42 over 9 equals e to the 10 c. At this point, I'll, I'll switch the c and 10 around so it's an algebra like makes sense to us. Going back to like what we've done before in this video, the way that you solve this is by doing the natural log. So natural log of 42 over 9 is going to equal 10c. Then we'll divide by 10 and get the natural log of 42 over 9 divided by 10 is equal to c. Using the natural log button on your calculator, punch the whole thing in. Preferably do this all in one step. It's just easier. It's more precise. Uh, we get 0.154044. Uh, so I'm going to round a little bit and just leave it as 0.154044. Um, approximately 154044. And so as a function, as a final answer, I'm going to combine both of these things. I'm going to say y equals 9e to the 0 0.154044. Four, four, x using all the values that I just found. This came into play a lot when we were working on the unit problem. And remember, if you're studying for a test as you watch this, um, and it is a test review, that part of the extended test is solving things like the unit problem. So you, you must be able to do this no matter how big or scary the numbers, just to, to kind of keep you ready. Um, and be sure as you're studying, you go over all the notes we did in class on when we solved the unit problem, we had that, that nice guided note sheet. Um, be sure you're reviewing that as well. So that was the last problem out of this unit, but there is going to be one problem that's a little bit cumulative, and that relates to average rates of change. So uh, if we have a population of bacteria, so here's our cumulative question. Uh, population of bacteria is modeled by this equation here. Uh, where t is the number of hours, find the average rate of bacteria growth between hours 3 and 7 of the experiment. All right, the first thing to do is let's just make a t-chart. Uh, this is going to be time. This is going to be bacteria. This is hour 3. This is going to be hour 7. And then we have to find the number of bacteria by plugging in the numbers 3 and 7 into the equation. So 200 times 1.15 to the third. There we go, 304.175. And number of bacteria after seven hours, take the same equation, replace that three with the seven, 532.003. Actually, that rounds to 004, so we'll leave it like that. Now, uh, rate of growth is going to be change in bacteria over the change in time. Well, we know the times, we know the bacteria amounts, so it's going to be something like this. 532.004 minus 304.175 all over 7 minus 3. Let's take a second and do all that in the calculator. So I want this number minus that number. Let's evaluate it. And divide it by, I know what 7 minus 3 is, that's 4. So 56.957. This is a word problem, so this alone is not enough. We need to put some units on here. So the time is in hours, so this was hours, this was bacteria. 
So this is going to be 56.957 bacteria per hour. Let's try the next one. Approximate instantaneous rate of bacteria growth at hour 5. The secret of the last unit was that all these instantaneous questions really were just the same as the ones that we just did. So let's make a t-chart again. Time and bacteria. And at hour 5, we can find the number of bacteria. And then our second time is going to be, let's just do the hour, the minute, or the moment right before hour 5. So that's hour 4.999. And now I need to plug in those two values, so I've got my equation still in the calculator. Scrolling up to find it. I'm going to plug in When you're doing instantaneous, it's really important to keep all these decimal places um, because these numbers are going to be really close together. Let's see what happens when we plug in 5, for example. So, replace all of these 9s and that decimal point with a 5. We get 402.2714375. And so if you're rounding too early, like if you rounded to here, it would look like there's no change. All of the change is happening in these decimal places out here. So you've got to keep them in. The best thing to do is actually keep them in your calculator. Um, so you're going to do, again, change in bacteria over change in time. 402.27 dot 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 minus 402.21 dot 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 over 5 minus 4.999. Uh, and I'm putting these dot dot dots in here because I'm not actually going to do what I wrote on the paper. I'm going to do this whole darn thing in the calculator. So I need to do this number minus minus this number. And then I need to divide by 0 0.001, 56.2183. Just like before, we need to attach some units. This is going to be bacteria per hour. Here's this entire problem. Um, so you do have to do some average and instant rate of change. Another place that you could get this is just the last review um, from the previous unit, that last review video, looking over your work on the last test. Uh, we've done a lot of problems like this. This is just the barest sort of bare bones um, going over this stuff. And so there's always more, more places to review on questions like this. You made it in time. Uh, this is the whole review video. This is all the questions. So now it's time for your moment of cat. And that's about all we get. Have a good night, folks.